بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى وصحبه 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 أجمعين Okay, so why China is perhaps not yet ready? So that's the second section uh, of this paper we are reading. Three decades have passed since the advent of the counter-revolution which partly overthrew Maoism in China. <clears throat> not revolution revolution that's a type <clears throat> in 1978 uh, uh, Deng Xiaoping announced the famous four modernizations four modernizations these modernization focus upon opening China to foreign investment and trade in a manner which would enable China's external sector to serve <clears throat> as a key growth stimulus for the national economy. What is usually not recognized, as Hutton asserts, is that this did not involve a major withdrawal. withdrawal uh, typos of the state from the economy. Okay. So four um, modernizations are one is agriculture, modernization of agriculture, two was industry, Three was science and technology. And fourth was national defense. And the goal was to make China into a relatively modest state by year 2000. That was these are my um, Deng Xiaoping Ping's um, four modernizations. Local government controlled and managed town and village enterprises flourished throughout the 1980s, and it was their burgeoning, burgeoning uh, profitability which attracted him, attracted much foreign investment in China during the 1990s. So, Um, no major industrial enterprise was privatized until 1997. So that this modernization didn't necessarily mean privatization as such. No major enterprise was privatized until 1997. Even in 2001, the state had control of 84% um, of companies listed in Beijing Stock Exchange. This revealed the connections between the current uh, modernization and the Maoist past, that the state-based uh, modernization. The modernization built upon the success of, so that's why we said partial withdrawal. Uh, the, model, the modernization built upon the success of the Maoist period. So it's not wasn't the result of a failure as such especially as far as the institutional redesign was concerned. Industrial decentralization undertaken by the Maoist regime was crucial for structuring the TVEs in the 90s, 1980s, uh, town and village enterprises. So envis envisaging China's emergence as global capital hegemonic state requires an evaluation of the probability of the continuing balancing of the state dominance, state dominance of the Chinese economy with the external sector's role as a primary, uh, primary growth stimulant. During the past decade, much of export growth has been undertaken by foreign producers. much of the export growth 
Uh, so during the past decade, much of the export has went to the foreign producers, American, European, Japanese, located in China's Sun Belt. Export growth at current level thus requires sustaining a corresponding growth of foreign production capacity. Uh, foreign, uh, sorry, export growth at, at current levels thus requires a sustain. Uh, export growth at current level requires the. Export growth at current level thus requires sustaining a corresponding growth of uh, foreign production capacity in China. And if it ties with uh, the West, uh, you know, uh, we can then probably, and if I'm America, you know, sanctions. China and bar its companies from investing in China, then obviously it would be hard to keep this up. Okay, uh, so in in a, in, a, in a crucial way, China China's export at least is dependent on export led growth is dependent on foreign companies, especially Chinese Europe. I mean European American and Japanese companies, which are the Western Bloc. Footnote 8, what does it say? Hutton, Hutton uh, maintains that if Chinese export maintain their current growth over the next 15 years, Western multilateral already in China would have to maintain a rate of growth, a rate of, uh, rate of growth of output, which has to be six or seven times higher than the rate of growth uh, of their domestic 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 market. So that doesn't seem that easy. Um, much of the much of this increase uh, we just talked about in production will have to be financed by reinvested profits or reinvesting, I think, profits and borrowings in China. <laughs> Uh, moreover, China's export growth is also likely to fall fall as major export market markets contract overseas uh, and domestic demand orientation of the Chinese economy must therefore increase if China's output growth is to be sustained at current current level. So China would have to applicate or substitute substitute the uh, at least partially then. The investment and the growth, which was due to foreign multinationals. So, increased domestic demand orientedness is also necessary because of the rapid upgrading of the technology, technological skills of Chinese workforce, which remains low by international standards. So, increased domestic demand orientedness is also necessary because of the rapid upgrading of the technological skills of Chinese workforce, which remains low by internet. Unskilled surplus low paid workers central to export processing are no longer easily available. So the same phenomenon of concentration. So when growth and the economy is grows and the uh, rate of profit uh, due to various reasons, and one of the reasons is that you can't find the low paid workers anymore because they have been upgraded. <laughs> um, so you have to do something about it. What is the uh, Note 9 saying? Note 9 is saying that is already occurring since. As we noted earlier, only a quarter of China's GDP growth during 2006 and was due to export expansion. So, domestic demand oriented orientatedness is uh, already happening, and you know the, chi the structure of Chinese economy, despite all the growth, uh, all the foreign investment, uh, and all the export. Uh, related activity still is uh, domestic oriented. So that's the strength of the Chinese economy. 
and that is increasing. Um, but whether that can replicate the level of growth which were achieved uh, in the achieved by multinational mul multinationals within China uh, is to be seen. The structural transformation that China has achieved during 1970 to the refutes the argument that the comprehensive embrace of what Hutton calls enlightenment value has been necessary. Certainly more economic and social reasons are now available to ordinary Chinese citizens than the, that was case, a case under Mao, but political power remains firmly in the hands of the Communist Party and the 1989 uprising was almost a complete failure. So far, China has followed the path of uh, the first generation Asian tigers, Taiwan, South Korea and Singapore, which achieved growth by combining state dominance of the economy, single party authoritarianism and selective encouragement of market initiatives. So the growth of China's um, structural transformation was based on um, what ha hasn't led to Uh, this structural transformation without embracing uh, Western style liberalism. And individualism. Okay, Western uh, exporters have found it extremely difficult to penetrate the domestic, domestic Chinese markets. Nine years have passed in China's accession to the WTO, but this has had very little impact on China's imports from the West. Um, nine years have passed. Obviously now, uh, I don't know what's the situation right now, but uh, probably hasn't changed that much. This is partly because of the grossly inequalizing character of China's growth throughout the modernization era. Call sites, uh, a 2005 government survey which calculated in the year that the top 10% of China's population owned 45% of the country's personal wealth, while the poorest 10% owned only 1.4%. Moreover, Kroll uh, finds that the inequality is uh, increasing, so the downward social mo mobility from middle to lower class group is more common than upward mobility. Obviously, uh, we're talking about relative inequality. Uh, since the mid-1980s, the income gap between town and country has widened, and in 2003, a large proportion of, of peasants uh, estimated variously at 23 to 50 percent of the rural population. Since the mid-1980s, uh, the income gap between the town and country has widened, and in 2003, a large proportion of peasants rural population lived or at or below official poverty line. Regional inequality also very high in China, with the Muslim Northwestern peasant regions is desperately poor. Um, so this is partly because, and this ref refers to non-penetration of um, domestic markets. China's imports from the Western found it extremely difficult to penetrate domestic Chinese market, and in part because of the 
extreme inequality. So only the poor richer class uh, can afford, I guess, uh, Western products. The gap between the rich and poor is the greatest in the cities, according to Kroll. Is it Kroll? I, I don't know this author. Um, should check. Um, Kroll, um, between 9 to 2. 12% of urban residents uh, lived below the officially defined poverty line in 2003. Emphasizes the estimates include the tens of millions of rural temporary migrants to the city. In Kroll's view, income disparities constitute the single most important constraints on the growth of China's mass consumption. Obviously, consumption requires purchasing power, increase in the purchasing power of the population. So, although the country is getting richer overall, uh, individuals are not necessarily getting uh, richer, you know, compa compared to, you know, their American and European counterparts, for example. Okay, so growing income and asset disparity that produce mass products are unrest, specifically from peasants who still number over 350 million in China. Since the early 1990s, they have been hurt by both by declining agricultural terms of trade and, exor and by exorbitant local administration taxes. Government corruption is rampant in the countryside. Uh, this footnote 11, O'Brien says that these were the most serious peasant protests since the time of the Great Leap Forward. Local taxes are us usually illegal, not sanctioned by the state. The central government often sees these taxes as harmful for they reduce farm output. Um, since about 2000 per um, since about 2000, per capita food production has, uh, for here, food has been on a declining trend, exacerbating inflation. Exacerbating so inflation, but uh, since 2000, per capita food production has been on a declining trend. Um, but the central government, uh, government's ability to uh, control local administration is limited. <laughs> Um, it talk about the power of the central state. Protests against local taxes usually seek to provoke central government's authority to act against that of local administration. So the purpose of protest is the protests are not uh, against the central government. They are actually seeking the help of others to seek for the, to provoke central government authority to act against the local administration mobilizing around the time-honored Chinese adage, the emperor is just but the officials are corrupt. <laughs> and these protests should not be seen as protest against uh, the whole system. Which uh, probably uh, Western commentators portray, portray them due to their own uh, self-interest uh, as or their wishful thinking um, as protests against the central government. Okay, let's um, stop here. اللهم <تصفيق> <تصفيق>